Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. In at Tackle Tactics HQ today, so excuse any phones or other random noises. There's a bit going on here. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you a bit today about the Nedlox EWG jig heads from TT Lures, a, a relatively new release. Nedlox EWG, I've had a few questions fired into me, so I thought I'd answer those questions. But what we're gonna do is a bit of a mix between rigging desk and also on water video that I've captured in the last week or two. Uh, of some sessions using the EWG, just to answer the questions that you guys have fired to me. So in terms of the Nedlox EWG, as we've seen in the past, it is a mushroom style jig head designed for that stand up presentation that we use with the Ned rig. So in this case though, we've got a extra wide gap hook, so a wide gape hook here, which allows us to rig that plastic weedless so that we can fish timber, we can fish weed, we can fish lilies, uh, reeds, all sorts of different structure that would normally snag or foul our jig head. So people have said to me, can I rig the two and a half inch grubs on the Nedlox EWG? So I know a lot of you love that little two and a half inch curl tail. It's a great plastic, awesome action in the tail, perfect bite size body on it. So it's very popular for uh, brim and redfin and bass and all sorts of different species love that two and a half inch grub. So I've got it rigged there and I'll show you a close up of that rig. So rigged on there the two and a half inch grubs looks absolutely beautiful fits that size one heavy duty hook very very well and people also said to me if i can rig it do i rig it tail up or tail down so there's lots of debate out there about tail up or tail down with your grubs it doesn't really matter a lot of the time uh, if i fish really really light jig heads i'll run tail down to stop it catching on it um, otherwise i fish tail up so that the tail movement is predominantly around the point of the hook uh, same with the Nedlox EWG. When I'm fishing that two and a half inch grubs weedless, I will fish it tail up so that the tail movement, especially when it's on the paws and it's standing upright, that tail is sort of moving around where that hook point is. So when the fish comes in to strike it, they're gonna to come to eat that tail and they've got more chance of, of finding that hook point. So that's a size one. It fits that two and a half inch grubs very well. And it also fits, if I was to give you my four go-tos for fishing on this particular jig head. I like the 2.75 inch TRD bugs is excellent on this jig head for brim and flathead and all sorts of other species. Also the two and a half inch slim swims, absolutely deadly tail action on this thing. And it works really, really well on a weedless presentation as well for flathead bass, whatever you might be chasing that the lead a tiny bait fish that, that Nedlox EWG gives you the option of fishing it to avoid fouling and snagging. The two and a half inch grubs, as we discussed, and also the 2.5 inch TRD craws is excellent on that size one hook as well. So size one hook in a 1 15th, 1 10th, 1 6th and 1 5th. And in these video segments coming up, I'll just talk you through why I choose a particular weights or particular colors in the heads as well. But available in that 1 15th for really shallow stuff and mangrove edges through the 1 10th for general flats and general fishing, 1 6th, for drop-offs and also up on the flats and then a one-fifth if you really want to hit those deeper edges for flathead and that sort of thing or hit those deeper schools if you're chasing things like bass and that sort of thing. So you can rig the two and a half inch grubs. You can also rig those other plastics that I've mentioned there, but perfect with any small finesse style plastic. So the Z-Man, three reasons why it's number one for me, weedless. It's 10 times tough, which means a lot of the time we're only pinning our chin on our weedless hook so we need that durability and, and strength in that plastic so that it doesn't just break when we rig it. It's also super soft and flexible so it clears the hook very easily. And our other advantage of the Z-Man 10 times tough elastic is it's buoyant. So once it's on the bottom, it stands up and it moves. So if you're in amongst the weed and that sort of thing, your plastic is standing up and yelling out to the fish, hey, I'm over here. The other question I had was, where can I fish them? So you can pretty much pull out this jig head and use it anywhere. You could still roll the flats with it. You can do all sorts of things with it, but Anywhere where you, you're at risk of snagging or fouling your plastic, then the Nedlox EWG is a viable option. So you'll see in these videos coming up, I fished it in canals, I fished it on the flats, we fished it up the creek recently in another video. Anywhere where we're trying to avoid fouling or snagging on weed and timber and that sort of thing, that jig head is, is worth using for sure. So our sessions, Sean and I got out for a quick one hour session in the canals. And I said to him, I'm gonna throw the Nedlox EWG around just to show people, people have asked, can you fish it anywhere? Where can you fish it? So I fished it in the canals. Primarily, we're fishing pontoons, 
boat ramps, uh, rock walls, all of that sort of thing. So there is a lot of bits of timber in there, old crab pots, crab pot ropes. And I felt the Nedlocks EWG come up over a few crab pot ropes. I felt it come up over some timber. So it definitely saved me snagging up a few times. And if you have a look at this first fish, basically it was a flatty laying at the base of a rock wall. And I love to hit those rock walls and also those boat ramps. If you can bounce it down the boat ramp and there's often snags at the end of the boat ramp, old rubble and that sort of thing. But hopping the Nedlocks EWG, we got that stand up presentation and away we go. In terms of what we chose to fish, I threw a one tenth ounce in a green pumpkin color with a natural colored two and a half inch grub. So I went for that really natural presentation in those canals where the, the stuff that they're eating in there is often bugs and bait fish and all sorts of natural prey that blows, hits the wall, falls into the water and that sort of thing. So one tenth ounce with a two and a half inch grubs. Let's have a look at the first fish that we got for this quick little session. He's on. He's on. Near the net, are you good? Fly fish. <laughs> He's not bad. I'm not sure I was even recording then. Oh, I think I might have been. There we go, the Nedlocks 1 tenth ounce green pumpkin EWG. Fishing in amongst the traffic. We're in some pond, in some canals, fishing some pontoons. Nice little flatty, legal flatty that nailed that once it hit the bottom. So there you go, not a monster of a flatty, but still a pretty cool fish to catch and well pinned on that Nedlocks EWG. Uh, we then decided, that was, that was down towards the mouth of the canals a bit more, we decided to push right up in up the back and look for a brim. And again, there wasn't a lot of movement in the canals with the tides that we had and that sort of thing. So we stuck with that one tenth ounce jig head with that natural colored grub on there. And this time I was chasing more particularly targeting brim. So we found a rock wall where the wind was blowing water through a pipe through a little bit of a, a tunnel or a bridge. So that water movement, there wasn't a lot of tidal flow, but we utilized the wind where the wind was pushing water through there to create a bit more movement. And we were picking around the edges of where the movement was moving in around the, the rock wall and uh, hooked up to a nice brim. So that was the second fish for that quick session in the canals. And then we moved on back home again because we only had a little short window of time. And then we'll cut to the other videos as well. So here we go, here's fishing a bit of a rock wall. And in this case, just casting in, allowing the, the jig head to hit the wall, sink straight down to the bottom of the wall, and then giving it a bit of a shake and a bit of movement because the fish will often follow that down. We give it a shake and then they'll eat it. And that's when I set the hook. So here we go, fish on. Oh, there he is. Got him. <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> you knew there had to be one there. <laughs> Rimbo? He's alright. Respectable brim. He's not bad. Not too bad. All right, so there we go. I, I flattered and a brim out of the canals for a quick hour in the afternoon, so that was a bit of fun and good to see Nedlocks EWG hooking up on a couple of different species in a different environment to where I'd fished it before. The next session that I did, I had a quick window of time, a lot of wind blowing, and I was gonna sneak down onto the flats. So I sort of had the bit of, bit of high tide and turn of the tide to run out. So had an hour or so before the wind really got too crazy. So I headed down to try and pick the sand patches apart on the weed for a flathead. So I love the orange head when I'm fishing in amongst the weed and that for brim and flatties. It's just a really good strike trigger, especially when the water's dirty. And in this case, the water was really dirty because of the wind. So that, that's a good strike trigger and helps the fish to find the presentation. I had that rigged with a midnight oil colored two and a half inch grubs, which is one of my favorite. 
So that's the presentation there. It was a 1 6th ounce Nedlox EWG with that two and a half inch grub. So I've got that UV, I've got that bit of flash in there. I've got everything to try and help me to catch a fish and help the fish find this presentation in amongst the weed and the turbulence that was happening on the flat. So I first found a big sand patch that looked brilliant and I anchored on it in the kayak so that I could hold position better and fish it. And then uh, fish that for a little while, no, no action there. So then I just did a bit, a bit of a quick drift and that's when I came across a, a flatty on the flat. So a lot of you will say, hang on, normally on the flats you fish the one tenth and I often do fish the one tenth. However, in this situation, because of the wind that was blowing, I went up to the one sixth and that allowed me to better control my casts in the wind and it also allowed me to more effectively stay in touch with the plastic and fish that plastic more effectively. So, you know, beautiful calm day, you can really utilize that one tenth and that slow fall and that natural presentation. In the wind, if you're battling, don't forget an upsize in your jig head weight can help you fish a lot more effectively, get into the strike zone better and stay in touch with your plastic a lot more when you're working that plastic. All right, let's catch a flatty. Alrighty, you can probably see the sand patch in the weed here. So basically, that's what we're going to fish. We're going to work this sand patch that's in amongst the dark weed. The lighter patch there is the sand. We're rigging weedless so that if we do end up in amongst the weed, it doesn't really matter too much. So we've got our Nedlox EWG. Put a bit of Procure on there to stir them up. We want to get that solid bite when we're rigging weedless. Right, let's see if we can find a flatty in amongst this sand. So we just sort of pick the edges a bit. All right, I found a really nice sand patch here. It's about the size of two to three cars. So to fish it effectively, I'm going to anchor and cast back into it with the wind. So. To do that, I'm going to use the Cooper Poly Anchor and I'm going to use the Anchor Running Rig. So we need to have a look at which way. So the wind's going to push us in. So we're going to utilize the wind to push us into position. Drop on a short run, Let's see what happens. a little bit of fiddling to position ourselves exactly where we want to be now we should have a good shot at this so I reckon there could be a flathead in this sand patch here so it's a good sand patch in the weed you can see it there it's probably the size of two or three cars four cars or something it's a, a good patch in the sand good patch of sand on a weed bank So I often find that the, the flathead like to hold in these sandy patches. Easy for them to bury and easy for them to hunt stuff that wanders through out of the weed. So all I'll do is I'll just pick my way around through the whole sand patch. Make sure that I've fished it all thoroughly. I'm just letting that Ned Rig do its thing and stand up on the bottom and I'm giving it a few shakes. And that little two and a half inch grub's tail is standing up on the paws and then on the retrieve it's got that beautiful irresistible ripple that it's got in the water really really good tail action when i'm fishing that <coughs> weedless head because i shouldn't foul too much in the weed i often overshoot the runway a bit so i get it up into the weed a bit so that by the time it falls to the bottom it drifts right in onto the edge there, right on the edge of the weed where it sort of hits the bottom. So that the flatties see it coming, they see it fall, they see it drop into the sand patch, and hopefully they're all over There we go, that's just working that sandy pocket with that Nedlox EWG weedless hook. 
and the Z-Man two and a half inch grubs. Oh, it's angry, angry fish. It's a nice flatty up in the shallows here. So you can see we're fishing in no water. There's not a lot of water here. We've got that Nedlock EWG weedless hook. And we've got that two and a half inch Z-Man grubs. That grubs has the most awesome tail action. I'm fishing a one sixth ounce orange head. Water's a bit dirty, so I'm using the orange as a bit of a strike trigger. And that two and a half inch grubs, that has the tail to get them to eat, that's for sure. But there we go, in the net. Oh, stay in there, buddy. Oh, he's out of the net. I think we've got to get ourselves a bigger net. <laughs> Definitely need a bigger net. Oh, come on, mate. Got him this time. <sighs> bit of crazy fun and games there, that's for sure. Stay there, mate, stay there. Get some lip grips on him. All right, lip grips on. Now we're okay. So we're right up in the, you can see the mangroves there, we're right up in the shallow stuff. Get our accessory for it, reckon there, and our net out of the way. Yeah, we're right up in the shallow stuff. Look at that, that's a nice flatty. That's a beautiful lizard. And that weedless hook pinned him in the jaw. So you can see the where he was pinned right in the jaw hinge there. And then we go two and a half inch grubs, rigged weedless on that Nedlocks EWG 1 sixth ounce head. So there you go, that was a pretty decent flathead off the flats. So with a standard jig head in that situation, I would have been fouling up to a lot more weed, fishing through those broken sand and weed pockets. And also there was a lot of this horrible slimy snotweed floating around in the water as well. So I would have been fouling up between the eelgrass and the snotweed. I would have spent more time taking weed off than actually fishing. So that Nedlocks EWG in the 1 6th with that two and a half inch grubs allowed me to effectively pick those pockets and find that nice flathead. And again, hooked securely, which was lucky because I had a shocker with the net, threw it back out of the net again and had to net it twice. So anyway, Nedlocks EWG did the job again in that situation. And then I basically, as the tide turned and the wind was terrible, I decided to just bail out and do a bit of a drift back to the ramp. So I drifted through an area where on the sander I could see a lot of weed on the bottom and dropping into a drain and it was about two meters to two and a half meters deep. So again, I stuck with the one sixth that I had on already rigged with that two and a half inch midnight oil grubs and that one sixth allowed me to cast ahead of my drift and allow that plastic to sink to the bottom and then I just hopped it back slowly on the bottom, hopped it and shook it. And it was nailed by a nice fish while fishing that drain as well. And that was my last fish for the session. So it was just another quick hour on the water, two fish session, but a nice flatty and finished off with a nice grunter. So there you go, let's check the grunter out. We've got a solid fish on here, feels pretty solid. So that's on that Z-Man two and a half inch grubs again. Nedlock CWG. What have we got? We've got a nice grunter. Nice grunter. So it's the Nedlock CWG weedless Ned Rig hook pinned beautifully on that nice grunter. Oh, 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 oh. So he's a silver or a spotted grunter. And he's a nice solid one. He is around that 35, 36. So he is a legal fish. So there you go, there's a nice grunter on that TT Lewis Nedlocks EWG, one sixth and a one, two and a half inch grubs in midnight oil. And I was just bouncing, bouncing that in the deeper water here along the weed edge. You can see the drop off on the sounder there and that's a, that's a nice grunter. So there you go folks, hopefully that gives you a starting point to get out there and chase a few fish on the Nedlocks EWG weedless Ned rig jig head from TT Lures. Uh, that size one hook in those four different weights in a few different colors. So I'll often run a natural color in clearer water or, or areas where I believe the, the fish may be hunting natural looking prey. I jump to my orange on the flats when I want a strike trigger and I love that one fifth in a chartreuse when I'm fishing 
deeper edges and drop-offs for the flathead. But that gives you an idea of some of the plastics that you can rig on the Nedlox EWG. Yes, including that awesome little two and a half inch grubs. Yep, you can get out there, you can target a bunch of different species on it. You can fish a bunch of different locations on it where weed or structure may cause you some fouling or snagging issues. So there you go, Nedlox EWG. Love to see what you get out there and catch on them. All the best with the fishing. Cheers.